a little better shot. <laughs> Chris. Chris Fedor. Hey, Dr. Chris. Some kind of night for you tonight. What was working so well? Um... You know, at the beginning, just trying to, you know, find the rhythm, find the game. And, you know, it was, a lot of it was making plays, you know, um, and honestly letting Jared Allen take over really the first quarter. Um, and then as they started to come back into it, just trying to find my, make, put my imprint on the game, attacking the rim, getting to the basket. Um, and, you know, like I said, when you, it, starts with, it started with J.A., you know, once you, you have your big, you know, setting the tone in the paint, you got to worry about him, and it allows all of us to kind of get in there and create and finish. And, you know, once we got to the second half, just, you know, they came back, started out strong, and just responded, you know, finding ways to continue to just find a way to lead. And, you know, whether it was on the defensive end or, you know, on the offensive end, just, just got to my spots and, you know, made some shots. Jay was talking about how this wasn't any other game. It was mm -hmm. the Lakers. It was LeBron, national mm -hmm. TV. You've had big moments throughout yeah. the course of your career. But what did it mean for you to have this kind of game on this stage against LeBron? Yeah, I said it to Jared uh, earlier. You know, it's it's crazy. Like, you know, I grew up watching him here, um, the ovation. It really hit for me, you know, like a full circle moment, you know, when I watched him get that standing ovation, you know, um, when they played his intro, you know, I, I kind of sat there on the um, <clears throat> the stanchion or whatever, and just kind of just watched the reception he got. And that it's incredible, you know, it's well deserved. He's, you know, one of the greatest players of all time. You know, brought a championship, the only championship to this franchise, and you always got to have respect and admiration for that. And you know, hopefully, we can do you know something similar. Uh, but you know, it's it's definitely an honor to be out there and you know to play against one of the greats and to get a dub too in front of in his home in his hometown and, and in front of our home crowd. And you know, I think you know. I don't know the history of the games. I don't know what the games have been like um, before this one, but I just know, you know, is that? Oh, well, you know, I'm just glad we got the win. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's that's huge. And, you know, he understands the TV game. He's returning and whatnot. So try to find a way to lead the guys to a win. And, you know, we did that. Tom. Tom with his AP. Uh, JB talked about this earlier, how when LeBron was here, he kind of set a standard for this organization. Mm -hmm. You followed him as a fan. What does it mean now to be playing here and kind of not necessarily following in his footsteps? You're trying to make your own legacy, mm -hmm. but to, to set your own standard after what he did here. Yeah, I think there's a level of excellence that he, he brought to, to the city. You know, when um, the way he's revered as an athlete, you know, I think the first initial thought you think of the Cleveland Cavaliers, you think of Brian. I don't think you, that's no disrespect to the Lakers or the Heat. Like, like that's when you think of Brian, you think of Cleveland and, you know, for he set that precedent you know you look at what he's done here in his career in two different stints um to be the only team to come back down from three run leading that group obviously k-love is here so i asked k-love about a bunch of stories and i'm like <laughs> it's funny i asked him about kelly olin the other day when he when he uh when he did the shoulder thing you know it's just it's funny because like I'm, I'm watching that as a fan and i'm screaming at the tv so it's like to, to it's kind of it's really cool like to be honest with you to be able to be here and be in a situation where as a kid you're literally watching games in front of a tv and now you're a part of this so um, like I said, he set a standard, you know, and we just want to, you know, we just want to honestly go out there and try and win the championship, you know, and like when you have a guy and have a group and have a team that, you know, wants to continue to build, it's great when you have that on, on our team and, you know, starts with our starts with our owner all the way, trickles down, and you feel the energy, you feel it, and, you know, I think this we can be something special, but we got a lot, a lot of work to do and continue to build. Kelsey. Kelsey Rose of The Athletic. Donald, why does Jared's presence um, change things for you guys so much on both ends of the floor? Um. You know he's he's one of he's one of the elite shot blockers in the league. Um, his finishing with either hand, you know, able to roll, able to set screens, able to understand the pick and roll game, understand where to be. Um, he he gives us so much versatility on that end, you know. Um, and he, he he makes Evans Evans' job easier as well. You know, he allows Ev to be in those positions. He makes all of our lives easier. But when you have two bigs down there, especially and he's the, he's the the head of the snake, you know, being being down there, and you know he he doesn't take that lightly. He goes out there and, and sets the tone every night and you know you look at a night like tonight he started out and came out the gate strong especially after five games typically after five games you're trying to find your way and you know get your win back and he was out there making all the plays um and you know that that's that type of that's the Jared Allen we all know and that's the type of player he's always been and you know we missed him down the lineup and we're glad he's we're glad he's back how does it just like um just open up things offensively because obviously you know when guys are guarding you or Darius mm -hmm. does leave like Jared or even Evan open down mm -hmm. in the paint but like how does it just I guess yeah you got to pick you got to pick if you want us to take a lap you know if you want him to get you know 
a dunk, you know, at the end of the day. And um, and even when you hit him in the pocket, he's able to finish. You know, that's not the case for, for a, a lot of bigs that roll the way he does. Um, you know, and, you know, that's why I'm the beneficiary of a lot of those in the lane. So is Darius. And then you also get, you know, to the point where the big cops up and, you know, that's where you get the lob. So you really have to just pick. And, and when you have guys, when you have a group that's unselfish and wants to make those plays, um, it goes a long way. There's so many ways I can go. I think the biggest thing for, for them is they hype me up, like, you know what I mean, in, in different ways. Like, it, it's, it's it's funny. Like, they're, they're at a point where it's like, nah, like, keep going. Like, I'm trying to calm down and be like, no, we got three minutes left. They're like, nah, you're going crazy. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 fun, and, and, and I'm, I'm appreciative of it. You know, and JB, you know, when I first got here, um, it was just more like just be yourself, and that, that gives you comfort coming into a new situation and a new a new standard. And these guys look to me, you know, and I and I appreciate that. And I'm starting uh, earning their respect, you know. And I think from the jump, that was the biggest thing is understanding that they believe in me as much as I believe in them, um, and it allows me to go out there and, and play this way. And and when I'm not playing to my standard, you know, they hold me accountable. Like you know, like I talked about Lamar Stevens doing that a, a few weeks ago or whatever. Like you know, so it's it's the relationship you want. JB's holding me accountable coaching staff whatever it may be um and when you have that trust from your guys you know it's it's great and it allows you to go be free going off of that jb also said you're a superstar but you're a superstar that's willing to play the part right mm -hmm. especially in a team dynamic like this mm -hmm. why is that so easy um be, i quite frankly because of my time in utah um i gave a lot of credit to my my teammates who like especially ricky you know joe Mike Conley, JC, like there's so many guys, Royce, Rudy, like they allowed me to be into that role, but also gave me, were giving me tips on how to, how to be a certain level of player, but also understand that it's, it's, you know, a team game. It's not just about one person. And I've always known that, but when you get to this level, there's certain things, there's certain plays, there's certain things you say, there's certain ways you go about on a day to day basis that, you know, it empowers everyone around you. And at the end of the day, I can do whatever I, I want to do on the floor, but at the end of the day, I can't do it without the guys around me, without my coaching staff. And, you know, it really started for me my rookie year and Ricky, Ricky Rubio was huge. And, you know, having them here is, is, is great. So um, allowing them, allowing me, you know, to kind of be into that role at an early age, early in my career. And now that I'm six years in, I'm, it's starting to be like, you know, I'm the one like trying to teach now. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's kind of funny how that works. But, you know, that's really where it was my first year um, after like 13 games, you know, it was just like, all right, go be you. And there were mistakes made along the way, but understanding how to lead a team and how to, to be that guy. Last two, Brendan and Demarest. Brendan Gulick has Insider Sports Illustrated Media Group. You know, I, I know it's not on your mind while you're playing, the, the idea that you're playing against LeBron and, and what he means to the city. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious that you respect and have great perspective of his time here, the fan base's passion for him. Is there a part in like your preparation for a game like this where you're telling yourself, hey, I'm trying to elevate because I know what I'm walking into and I know how revered he is and, and the situation Yeah, is. you know, you always... Like it doesn't matter who it is, you always want to spoil the homecoming. Like I think that's that's just a competitor, and you always want to do that. But you know, I said it to the guys in the huddle. Like, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot going on. You know, there's going to be cheers at the free throw for him. There's going to be booze for him. There's going to be cheers for us. Going to be like, there's going to be so much emotion. And at the end of the day, we just got to play 48 minutes of our basketball. You know, at the end of the day, you can't get caught up in all that. Um, and I think that's what we did tonight as a group. Um, but you know, this it's it's not an easy thing to do for everybody. Everybody's personally different. Um, <clears throat> I think you know, for for myself, uh, just finding ways to take it day by day, game, or moment by moment in the game, um, not making the moment too big, and you know, but also in, in embracing what's around. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not the type to be like, all right, like let's ignore the fact that he's back. Like you know, it's it's. I was watching him as a kid. Like it was pretty dope. I sat there on the stanchion and watched the crowd give him a standing ovation. Like that was that was cool. You know, it was great to see. But you know, in the same token, you allow yourself to be a part of the moment, but understand that you know you can't let that deter you, you know, take you away from, you know, getting a stop, boxing out, getting a rebound, being able to play in different situations. And that was just my message tonight, but you can't run away from it. You got to be able to embrace it, understand it's going to be there. You're going to feel that emotion and um, got to play through it.
told us a couple weeks ago that uh, the MVP chance here at the free throw line kind of gave you the yips there for a minute. You didn't worry to that? Yeah, I made sure I made the free throw tonight. <laughs> Whereas in East Chronicle Telegram, Donovan, um, you sort of touched on it a little bit, but I'm wondering um, with Jarrett back and changing the dynamic, just your assessment of how cohesive this team is playing like as a unit right now, playing mm -hmm. together as a group, even through with Jared or without, or just even through some of these different lineups. Yeah, the you know, that's the ultimate sign of a, a team you want to be. You know, you look at the different teams around the league who have been to the finals have been far in the playoffs, you know, the Milwaukee's, the, the Golden States, the Boston's, um, you can keep going down the line. There's going to be guys in and out. And ultimately you have to, the Phoenix is, is, as well, like you look at them being able to have guys come in and out the lineup and can still continue to keep that level of play. That's what we're ultimately trying to get to. Um, you know, it's always great to have, you know, our, our whole team there, but that's not always going to be the case and understanding that everybody's going to have to step up in their moment and what they do. Um, and we're building that. We're learning that and we're building that. And it's it's been great in times and there's been times like we, we lost five in a row. We lost games we shouldn't have. Um, but that's all part of the building process and learning and, and getting used to each other and getting used to that. And ultimately it just builds confidence with everybody. And the thing about this group is we have guys that even if they don't play, like, you know, like Raul Neto, for example, may not play, you know, he played a minute, 43 seconds tonight, but I know, we all know for a fact, if you gave him a 25, 30 minute stint, he knows exactly where to be, how to run an offense. Um, so that's that's the best part about this group is that we we know where to be and, you know, we're continuing to build that as a group. Great. Thanks,